I'm coming from Myrtle Beach on vacation this week. Uh, and of course, I have to talk about the uh, Helsinki summit and the whole Trump-Putin thing and, and Trump's comments both ways. And of course, this was not one of Trump's best moments. Um, come out saying, you know, one thing and then the next day, oh, no, I changed one word. OK, that 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 doesn't pass. And, and you know, this is Donald Trump. Um, he's very impulsive. Uh, somebody once said has the uh, impulse control of a grease fire. And that's just the way he is. Nobody's been able to control him. And that's the way he's going to be. And uh, so, you know, his his you know, strong base did not punish him for this that much. I mean, the media did and even some Republicans and all. But but, you know, it was like 42 percent of people still approve of the way he's handling um, relations with Russia within a 40 to 44 percent range over recent months. So so no big change there. Now, among registered voters, it, it, it's a little different. Fifty five percent disapprove. And 37% approved. So, so not quite that 42%. But, but still, you know, a lot of people are questioning whether Trump's finally gone too far and stuff. You know, I don't think, uh, you know, that's the big issue here. This is a short term event. And, and yeah, down the road, it, it, Trump could shoot himself in the foot because, you know, if you have no impulse control as a politician, you can destroy yourself. And, and that's a possibility down the road. But of course, I still think the bigger issue is the economy. The economy has been better with his tax cuts and stuff and just the confidence of, of businesses and people knowing he's going to be very pro-business. I mean, it has been better. I don't think that's going to last. I don't think it's sustainable. I've said that in many issues here. But it has been better. And if, and if we get to 2020, uh, and, you know, when he's up for re-election and the economy is this good or better, uh, I don't see much to run against him. And yes, uh, he could get re-elected if he doesn't just totally do something crazy, which is also still a possibility. Uh, but but I think the most important thing is to step back and, and, and take a bigger view of all this. Uh, in my Zero Hour book, and, and people aren't getting this yet. I mean, we went out of our way to say, look, this is not just a, you know, short term populist revolution or, or revolt. This is a major backlash against globalization. This happened between World War One and World War Two, and especially in the Great Depression. Trade tariffs went up like crazy uh, in the Great Depression and made it worse. And, and, and this could, too. Uh, but we're also at a point especially since World War II, where the U.S. has been the nice guy uh, in the world and, and been the benefactor for the world. We've policed the world and provided defense for everybody and, and, and kind of safety for everybody at our expense. Uh, we've been overly nice on trade agreements and let uh, other countries take advantage of us, sometimes for real reasons and sometimes for not. I mean, China is really the country that has, let's call it, cheated the most. There's no question about it. I, the Germans are just, you know, European, Northern Europeans are just damn good luxury car makers. And, and a lot of Asian countries are, are just really good at making low cost goods that we can't with lower wages. But, but China does more than that. So, I mean, this is a time to confront uh, unfair trade agreements. Um, it is a time to deal with illegal immigration, which we've been so lax on for, for, for decades now. But it is not a time to tell immigrants they're not welcome and they're all criminals and stuff. That is not a good policy, period. Tightening them up on illegals, yes. But don't tell the legals and the illegals that could become legals, we don't want you here. We are going to solely, and mark my words in this, solely regret cramping down so much and discouraging immigration at a time when demographics are terrible for almost all the developed world. And countries like Canada and Australia and Singapore are, are attracting immigrants and attracting better immigrants. Um, so again, this, this whole thing about Trump, look, I agree with, with a number of his policies. I don't agree with others. But I tell you one thing, he is the beginning of a disruption. And even if he's doing it without much diplomacy, which he is, um, 
it's still to me part of the bigger picture and something that needs to happen. And he may or may not survive this term. I, I would bet he wouldn't because I do not think the economy will hold up until 2020. I, if we're not in a deep downturn by sometime in 2020, then, then I'm going to have to reconsider everything about our forecasting. Yes, government stimulus can work and work and work, but it can't work forever because it is something for nothing. So I don't think the economy will hold up that long. I think the latest it holds up is, is into next year, and then it starts to crash in late 2019, 2020, right on the 90-year cycle. And that's a big cycle. Um, you know, for the economy from 1929 to 32, but but this is the beginning of something. And Zero Hour, the the latest book, it was the original title was was Trump, Brexit, and the next civil war. Well, that ended up changing with the publisher; they didn't want to date the book and stuff. And I really think that was a better title because it was more like what's happening and more nail in hand. Brexit, you know, UK breaking away from from. The EU and stuff, you know, in the Eurozone. I mean, that was a big deal. That was the first shot across the, the bow. And then Trump coming in and saying, look, trade agreements are not fair and all this stuff. And we have to have better immigration, all this sort of stuff. This is real stuff. And this is this backlash against globalization. And believe me, I am pro, pro, pro globalization. I am pro urbanization. I'm pro globalization. I'm pro capitalism. I'm pro democracy. All these things build a more productive world. And this is how we've gotten so rich since the last 250 year cycle hit in the late 1700s. And, and again, free market capitalism, industrial revolution met democracy. And those two opposites have created the greatest dynamics in history for raising our standard of living. And it's just gone up so dramatically, you can't even compare life back then or even back to the beginning of the last century, the early 1900s, when we've gone up eight, now maybe nine times standard of living adjusted for inflation. But all things have cycles and globalization has succeeded so much. This is the second wave, not the first wave. The second big wave and the largest of globalization since World War II, and it's gone so far, so fast that people are uncomfortable. Too much cultural clash around the world, too much internet and, and, and too much cultural clash within countries now that we have such knowledge and can see the differences. And, and we are going to have to reorganize the world around more compatible cultures and, and regions and stuff. And, and there's going to have to be a lot of political change and a lot of readjustments and things like trade agreements and, and immigration and things we're dealing with now. Um, and, and I think there's a better way to do this. But this is part of the process. And this is not going to happen overnight. We are warning people that what we have in the next maybe three to five years is a major debt deleveraging and financial crisis that we didn't go through in 2008 and nine like we should have. And we're going to have to go through it or we're going to be doomed for a flatline economy like Japan forever. They've already proven that's the consequence. You don't deal with your debt. You don't uh, deleverage and let bad businesses and zombie banks fail. You end up in a flatline economy forever. And then you eventually die in an aging society. And, and, and you even increase the tendencies towards lower births and stuff with such a flatline economy for young people and stuff. So this is the beginning of something. And again, the issue of whether Trump survives or not, I would bet not because of the economy more than his lack of diplomacy and impulse control. That could get him as well. But but again, I uh, the media may be jumping up and down, but his supporters are not deserting him on this from the polls I see recently. And we'll see how that plays out. But But see this bigger picture. This is a necessary revolution politically and socially. 250 year cycle. This is a necessary populist revolution and backlash like we saw in the early 1930s. And it's all going to hit in the next several years. And, and this backlash against globalization and this populist revolution is going to last longer than the financial crisis. That could be cleaned up like 1929 to 32 largely in three years with a lot of reforms to follow. And but but again, the worst was over in three years and we did nothing but boom after that. So that's the better bigger picture to have here. Uh, there's things I don't like about Trump and there's things I like about Trump, but I see him as, as part of this process happening and, and it's necessary 
You have to, the whole system has to break down. However it breaks down from failure or somebody like Trump coming in with a wrecking ball or, or countries starting to succeed from trading agreements and unions like the European Union and countries breaking up into two like could happen in many countries, including our, this is part of the process. We just want to warn you so you see it coming and, and you, you can plan in advance and be ahead of the curve here. Again, this is not just a financial crisis coming, which is the next big challenge. There's going to be huge political and, and social changes and reforms. And, and it's good to be on the right side of that and, and even be planning maybe where you live. I'm kind of happy sitting in Puerto Rico right now, seeing how it shakes out in the United States. Uh, and, and people really should consider, hey, if I'm a blue person, uh, am I in a blue place, you know, or, or, or could I be in a blue place? If I'm a red person, am I in a red place or could I be better red place and, and still be near my family or whatever or business? Um, this is going to be, I think, a, a bigger and bigger issue. So again, this is a big thing happening and everybody I think is understating what is occurring here. And it is in process. Trump, Brexit, and many more things are all a part of this. It is going to be messy. Revolutions, breakdowns are never easy. They're messy. So we're just warning you in advance, and we will keep you updated to the changes we see.